Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. Where, where did all those moons come from? What, what is this craziness? Yeah, I was Luigi balloon worlding it up and well, I got a whole bunch of moons here to feed to the Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> and we come up with, oh man, one short, I must have bought 118 and not 119. Well, well, looks like that's out then, huh? Yeah, I was, you know, was going to show the ending, but now nah, I guess I'm going to have to make another part for the ending. <laughs> so the other thing that I came here for after I finished is, uh plopped on over here and seen if like yeah yeah I thought about doing this to see if it's actually possible to do the glitch to like you know to go into the other track so let's go ahead and uh, we in like okay we're under a beam and <laughs> prepare to bound oh my Arceus it worked <laughs> oh no it's instant death though <laughs> so I guess unlike the other one, you can't explore this particular place. I I guess maybe perhaps. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I was too close to the ceiling. I couldn't pop out. I'm just gonna try. Like, well, actually, no. That's that's all. It all looks like it's lower than that death zone that I had there. <laughs> Uh, so I'm uh, just gonna do it one more time here. Ooh, 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 oh! Come on now, we can do this. We did it so smoothly. There we go. Oh, I thought I got it. <laughs> no, no, it's it's tricky. It's tr oh, I was pushing forward and I bounced off the yeah. Should maybe I should maybe just get a little. Ooh, oh yeah! No, yeah, that isn't even solid. Mario doesn't show any sort of... <laughs> Alright, so... Well, at, at least we know we can actually go through the glass... Well, I should say the... The support beam, I should say. <laughs> As opposed to... Uh, yeah, anyway. Alright, so I've got a bunch of stuff that I wanted to show that I've been kind of accumulating for stuff and stuff. And... We're gonna start at the Moon Kingdom. By the way, with uh, me buying all those moons, I, I got a, one of those special bonus coin dealios at the Snow Kingdom. <laughs> so I milked that for all it was worth, buying all sorts of outfits and, and whatnot to boot, so... <laughs> it was... a thing of beauty. Like, every 14 to 16, so I guess you could say 15 on average, um, balloons that I did with Luigi because I kept the streak going by only choosing ones that I could do quickly and uh, simply, I guess you could say. It was like pfft, only a couple minutes per cycle of me getting 9,999 coins. <laughs> it was awesome. Alright, so I've been meaning to show a little while that, yeah, you can rebattle. Rosie O'Donnell anytime you would like to, even if you come through the back door. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Alright, so my plan here is to sort of redeem myself against Rosie, because for some reason, I don't know why, I've always taken damage on such an easy boss. I think it's because I just got impatient, or something like that, so yeah. <laughs> and, well, as you can tell, it's not that hard to pull this off without any sort of damage whatsoever. So, I don't know why I was having so any sorts of trouble here. In fact, I could even do me 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 to dodge stuff as well, so... Yeah! <laughs> oh, not close enough to do, do the homing dealio. That is okay. All I have to do is avoid the arrows, and we are good to go. Also, make sure that you have enough distance between you and Rosie O'Donnell, otherwise, you are gonna have some chunk in your face. And yeah, it's two without any damage. Look at that. It's just, it's 
It's a miracle what, what you can do when you're being patient, isn't it? <laughs> As I said, it's a very, very easy boss. It's just, yeah, like no matter how many hats that little chomper there gets, it doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> As a matter of fact, even staying towards the edge like this, you can cause Rosie O'Donnell to not have as much travel distance towards you. Yeah, see that? See that? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> you can even do moves like that to be all fancy. And there we go. I would call this a pretty, pretty safe, damageless run. I even showed you some new tactics. <laughs> So go ahead and rebattle Madame Brood slash Rosie O'Donnell or any of the Brutals over at Dark Side of the Moon if you would like to. Over and over and over again. And I should also. And well, I was gonna say also get some coins out of this too, but eh. <laughs> so about the Moon Cave skip dealio. Um it turns out that they patched it so that it's not quite as easy to do, but it is apparently still possible to do this. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go do stuff like this and... Well, <laughs> I wanted the half jump if you didn't mind. <laughs> so yeah, what you're supposed to do is get it, get a jump off of this wall here in some fashion. I think it is higher to do, do, do one of these first, probably. It, oh, wait, you can't do a half jump off the... Hmm... 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 I mean, I, I watched how it was done. And <laughs> Let's just see if I can get this here. Try just back... No, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the backflip, because I'm... The backflip isn't getting as high as the little... Because, yeah, the ground pound thing, because I'm getting a little bit higher than that line on the wall. Oh... <laughs> Maybe it's like the game designers knew now and they're automatically making me not being able to half jump or something like that. I don't know, but anyway, just here we go. Hold that. And seriously? Come on now. <laughs> I should be able to do the half jump at least. And then I'm, I'm supposed to bounce off of this wall here and then get high enough that I get over that. See that shadowed area? You want, yeah, you want to get over that. Then you should be able to wall kick off that, and then do a dive off to the uh, top of the ledge. Uh, I'm gonna go... <laughs> well, well, come on now. <laughs> we can do this. We're gonna bounce off. <laughs> I say, well, that, now I gotta restart, but I mean, we're gonna bounce off that wall. We're gonna bounce off our hats. <laughs> and we go... Really? Come on now, can't you do this, then, then that, and then... Yes, you can! <laughs> Why can't I do it over here? Is that a part of the patch? I don't know. Uh, come on now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do that. Hold the button. Pardon me? Maybe I'm gonna have to try this in the next part. <laughs> Because maybe they double patched it or something. I don't know. <laughs> see, it doesn't seem to work there, but. Works fine, just. <laughs> like, I know how to do the hat jump. You see, we do that consistently. What if I. Okay, so. If, so, is it just if. Yeah, if I do jumps off of Sphinx's head? Oh, what? Or is it just not letting me do it off a certain height, or maybe off of a wall kick? Like, let's try it off a wall kick then. Just go one of these. Okay, maybe it is off a wall kick. Hmm. Then maybe I gotta try this a little bit differently here. By the way, um, yeah, I figured out how to do that little air jump thing that I've seen people do. It's you just simply hit the jump button. So you do, yeah, yep. <laughs> Why didn't I try that of all things? I guess I figured because it was, it should have been more like New Super Mario Brothers Wii or U or something like that, where you just shake and yeah. Okay, so hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Can I even get like wall kicks off of two different side walls here? Uh, after a certain point, it's like you stop gripping on. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe they double patch this or something. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I mean, the move didn't look all that hard to do, but maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll keep practicing it or and and whatnot off camera. So that's my current progress on it. Then I suppose you could say. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to show you here is all the stuff that we got around the Odyssey, like in more more detail here, because we got tons and tons of poop, and you can interact with all the poop in some some way, shape, or form, because, well, you know, you can jump on it and stuff like that, but other stuff is more than others. Yeah, we even got Bowser's lanterns here, got the moon, uh, well, a replica of the moon, you can't quite, can't quite walk around it in circles. Big ol' new donk, big ol' palm tree. The nesting dolls, I'd say, are the most interactive of all the ones, because they actually do, yeah. You notice that with the, the moon, the, like the little, yeah, moon rock dealio that we got over there is actually floating <laughs> inside the case. Not exactly sure how that works, but it is. Maybe it's using magnetism? Perhaps, maybe, it might be, could be, and I think I hit everything in the room to show you whether or not there's interactivity, and yes, even the, like, the pillows and the tea set and stuff like that have their own little place in here, so that's a nice, uh, like, I like everything that you buy has, has a little nice touch to it of where they decide to put it, and all of our stickers, there's nothing really much on the top other than the Hanafuda cards there, but yeah, all the stickers we've got from all the kingdoms, can I see inside the steam gardens there, or are you going to give me trouble? I guess you're going to give me trouble, but you can sort of see it there. <laughs> and yep, everything is a looking beautiful for 100% completion. So now, what I was thinking about doing is now reading off two of the four remaining brochures, starting with the Cloud Kingdom, because you know that the brochures take maybe about mm, three, four minutes to read a piece. So, <laughs> so here we go, Nimbus Arena. Let's go. And you know, I could have actually probably just you know, went, well, actually no, I couldn't have gone from world to world from here, could I? Nope. All right, <laughs> Cloud Kingdom, mystery above our heads. Nimbus Arena, the archaeological dig site in the clouds. They dig in here? <laughs> Population unknown, size unknown. How could it be unknown if, well, I mean, I guess maybe it changes size at, depending on how the clouds go. I don't know. Locals, yeah, I guess you could say unknown. It, 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 it seems like everyone else's visitors. Currency, unknown. Definitely no currency other than, I guess, coins, but everyone has coins. Industry, unknown. <laughs> it's a weather industry, I don't know. Temperature, mmm, 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 that's decent. Yeah, I'd still go nude. The clouds in question. <laughs> Life above the clouds. Perhaps everyone has had the experience of looking up at the clouds and imagining what it would be like to live among them. So, Maybe they just haven't been able to get up there and they just know that there's a kingdom up here. That's why they photo, you know, took photos down from the ground. I don't know. As it turns out, as fantastical as it may sound, there is one such a kingdom whose citizens look down on the world from a fluffy, puffy paradise. The super light stuff also found at Fossil Falls. So maybe these are the origins of the cloudy hats. Maybe? Strangely floaty material. While the particles that make up a cloud are extremely small and light, researchers have recently discovered a kind of cloud-like material that, once, that one can walk on. First discovered in Fossil Falls? Okay, maybe not then. <laughs> this substance can change into and hold new shapes and even support weight! Ooh. The discovery prompted certain researchers to open an investigation into whether there might be might have once been a cloud kingdom in the sky like Nimbus Land from Super Mario RPG Symbols of Peace perhaps signifying how beautiful this place is. Many doves can be found living here. Supposedly spotting a flock of doves will grant you increased happiness. 
Other side. <laughs> okay, they got pictures up here. <laughs> Vestiges of greatness. Once researchers started looking for places in the sky, they quickly found a large platform of the levitating substance dubbed Nimbus Arena. Mysteriously, the land had markings that accurately showed the waxing and waning phases of the moon. Now, besides the obvious how, researchers had the question, why? <laughs> I wonder why they called it an arena. Maybe because it's circular? I mean, surely they couldn't have like guess that we would have a boss battle up here or something, could they? <laughs> the site of some kind of ceremony? Maybe? Mm. Giant cloud arches. Researchers are thus far baffled by the large cloud archway here. Some theorize that it's kind of a reticle that aligns with the moon. Some evidence suggests that the arch pulled this kingdom's moon rock to a specific location from the moon. The only certainty is that the Cloud Kingdom will continue to interest researchers for many years. Whatever else it is, it is beautiful. <laughs> so, so maybe the Cloud Kingdom's arches pulled moon rocks to other places as well? Maybe? If so, it's a nice little piece of trivia. Showers of flowers. The investigation is concluded now and yielded a few undisputed facts. But the bits of cloud that fall like flower petals here make it the most dreamlike place you'll ever visit. Except maybe the Wooded Kingdom. Trust us, pictures can't do it justice. <laughs> Just a still image. It's like, eh, yeah, it's not emotions. <laughs> Very clever. That's I, I think that's actually part reference to photography in that it's harder to capture things in motion uh, in their beauty, you know, as a still image uh, without real cre creativity behind that. Anyway, three keys to the kingdom. Navigate the vast sea of clouds that seems to go on forever. Feel the unyielding cloud floor that won't budge no matter how you stomp, and we have ground pounded. <laughs> Explore the remnants of the civilization that once existed here. You can barely see it, but this was made by the Crazy Cap Company. <laughs> And now, the ruin the kingdom. And skip, skip, skip. Go, go, go. And we will put on a show, show, show. Maybe. <laughs> ah, we, we cleared this place out. And sadly, we cannot rematch our dragony friend here. We can only do so at the Mushroom Kingdom. But we can take in the atmosphere while we read the brochure. Because we could even hear the bats screeling in the background. Even though they didn't knock down the volume levels when you're in the pause menu. Anyway, Ruin Kingdom, Stark land long past its glory days. It's, some things seem to be holding up somehow. I'm not sure how this hole carved in the middle of this leaning tower of Pisa is holding together, but eh! Mm, seems to be working well. Grumbled in a grim reminder of past conflicts. Populate. So we're going back to the unknowns. Population unknown. Size unknown. Locals unknowns. Currency unknown. Industry unknown. Maybe the dragon can make his own industry and bring in all sorts of tourists. Be like, see the large dragon in the brochure, and then it, then the people come here and they're like, it's me. Hello, I'm friendly now. I'm not taking over with mind control with Bowser or something like that. You may pet me and take pictures with me. Temperature average 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Eh, mm, yeah, mm, still might be nude in that, I guess. The moon frames the tower ominously. You can get some awesome photography if you'd like to here. Reaching for the heavens. This tower once collected energy from lightning in the thunder clouds that constantly swirl here. Some say that it was destroyed by repeated lightning strikes, but others note that unusual shapes into which the tower crumbled and wonder if it fell into ruin for different reasons entirely. Dun dun dun. I don't know, it could be the dragon for all we know. <laughs> 
buried to the hilt. Actually, it probably isn't the dragon. It just sounds like the dragon made made its home here. It doesn't seem dangerous or anything once you take care of the the mind control here. But yeah, as you see Bowser's swords here. Maybe, maybe the swords that were in the dragon were like attacks from Bowser, and some of them missed and they ended up getting stuck in the ground or something like that. Ah. High stakes. Amid the ruins, these swords surely stand out. They are thought to be left over from a large battle here in Crumbledon. One certainly feels a sense of intentionality in the way they're stuck straight down as if fallen from the sky. So yeah, I guess maybe it is Bowser related maybe? Some see them not as swords, but rather nails or stakes. Perhaps the eyelets at the top allowed ropes or chains through to anchor something, of course. Well, yes, yes, they were co connected by chains, but I guess they never seen the dragon. Allowed ropes or chains through to anchor something, but it's impossible to say what. I guess there's no dragon here now, just bats. So yeah, it probably wasn't the dragons doing that. Yeah, when they didn't, when they made this or anything like that, so... Anyway, map. <laughs> <laughs> Ruin dreams. It's only because of the people of Crumbledon's skill in construction that there are ruins left here to see. Their building style is liable and straightforward, but whatever they hope to accomplish by harnessing that through some power of lightning remains unclear. So they were actually doing... They are trying to make Frankenstein here! Some have theorized that the circular plaza atop the tower was built for a standoff of some kind. <laughs> It maybe it was built for a future battle between Mario and the dragon. Are there clues to what happened here? Well, there are. Well, there are actually, as you can see, claw marks where my cursor is. I guess a little bit there. So I don't know. Maybe this was taken after the dragon had its way with the place. I don't know. Anyway, the great altar. It's thought that it's thought this altar was built so this former kingdom could communicate with, or perhaps confront something. Aliens, aliens. That's why we're gonna storm Area Fifty Two. <laughs> this is the only altar built here, and scholars have been keen to discover its intent. It's also said to be shaped like something in particular. The idea that it was meant to charge lightning has been disproven. Hmm. So. What is this, like the story of, like, a progress of things? Because they're saying that, that they were they were hoped to harness the power of lightning here. Does that mean that they didn't, or that they were possibly able to, but didn't really get far? But then over here, it says the area has met the charge, lightning has been disproven, but, but it sounds like, I don't, uh... I feel there's a conflict there. Then the, the new theory is that it was built to call something down and then restrain the lightning. Doesn't it look like a creature of some kind? Ooh, dragon head ish. Yeah, those that stuff that place we crawled underneath to get the treasure chest and whatnot. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a dragony head look to it, or maybe even a shark head. Sort of kinda, of, but probably dragon, y'all. <laughs> Are those claw marks? I will spoil it. Yes. <laughs> this bone here has numerous large slashes cut through it, often in parallel tracks, suggesting giant claws. But that can't be right. What could claw through stone? There's gotta be a logical explanation, right? Should we be here taking these photos and making a tourist brochure? Probably not! Three creeps to the kingdom. V visit the vast, crumbling tower still standing. Watch over the area. Well, it's not that vast. I mean, well, I mean, I guess it, it would be if you could explore through the whole thing, but we, we only really have access to the, like, the top areas. And one dragon now. Investigate the deep, claw-like marks in the stone. Admire the durable construction techniques of a once proud kingdom. So I guess that's... I guess, um... It's just so durable that it will not topple over whatsoever. <laughs> and of course, Crazy Cap Company made this brochure. So yeah, if you want to get a look at this yourself, you know, the little the head over there. Mhm. Mm Looks like teeth down below with, with between the gaps there. I don't really see a remnant of an eye per se, but you know, I guess maybe you could say that bottom of the 
structure that's shaded over there has got a little bit of an eye there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, you know, it's, it's the human nature to see faces and things, I guess you could say. <laughs> and here is for your photography needs. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Eee. And with that, I'm going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when I explore and cover some more stuff that I haven't yet covered and whatnot. Still one moon that I've got to buy, after all. Dang, I sure wish I hadn't miscounted.